Hey everybody and welcome back. This is the third and final part of our mapping system tutorial. Now before I get started it's worth pointing out that this is not the only way to do this. I know that there's people watching who might be pulling their hair out saying no I wouldn't do it like that but this is how I do it. I find this to be the simplest as well so before we jump in give us a thumbs up a subscribe if you haven't already hit that notification icon if you want to stay updated on my content and uh, thank you very much for doing that so let's get on with it if you haven't followed me in the previous videos what we're going to do is we're going to move on from our previous mapping system and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a class for our locations so we're in our events.rpui file if you haven't got this file because you haven't followed in previous videos no problem just create a new init python block and then you can carry on so we're going to come to the bottom of our init python block just after all the other classes that we've defined and we're going to create a new class and this class is going to be called when I don't have finger troll, it's going to be called a place and it's going to be an object and we're going to define its init like so and it needs a self now if you remember from our map screen we need an x location we need a y location those are our x and y coordinates for its position on the map and we need a name now if we were using different icons we could add an icon into this class as well but we aren't we've just got x y and name for this and we hit enter so now we need to say self dot x equals x self dot y equals y self dot name equals name like so and that's really all we need to do for that class. Now what we can come down here and do is we've actually started defining the variables here. So we've got our class called place. So we're gonna call our list of places, places. And it's gonna be a, an empty list like so. And we're also going to put in here places.append. In fact, we're going to add one more variable to make our, because we're using this loop, we're going to create a bunch of empty ones. So what we also need to do is we need to create an is active flag. Like so, and obviously we need to put that in the top there, like so. And that'll mean that we'll make it easier for us to decide whether or not to draw a location on the map or not. So we're going to append our list with place and the default variable values for our uh, properties is going to be zero, zero, empty string, false, like that. So we've given it an X and a Y of zero. We've given it an empty string as a name and we've said that it is not active like so. Now obviously we need to set up some of the locations that we have already done. So the first one we're going to name, we're going to call place brackets uh, zero. And then we're going to say equals places. And we're going to give it a random X and Y. So 1000 by 600 is going to be the home location and it's going to be active. Now we're going to do the same again for a second location. And we're going to give this one a 200 by 700. This one's going to be the shop. That one's also active. Then place uh, two. Sorry, I'm having a moment there. And we're going to call this one places. 500 along now we're going to give this one 1200 along by hmm, 50 just to be different this one's going to be aunties 
house. That one's also active. Then we're going to have a place three places. I'm going to just give this one another random. I'm going to give this one 1800 by 900. This one's going to be school like so so we've got four locations there you could go on and i say if you were passing this from an xml file you could have you know up to 50 because that's the size of the um list that we've created you could always bump that up to more if you so wished so now that we've got these places we need to obviously display them on the map so we're going to come back into our map screen rpy and we're going to delete most of the buttons like so and we're going to replace it with a loop for q in place so we've said for every item in our list of places hang on a minute i've just realized i made a boo-boo there and none of you told me shocking the list is called places the class is called place so we need to change all of those we need to take the s's away from these ones there we go now it'll work so we're going to say for Q in places. So for every list in that, of every item in that list, if Q dot is active. So it's only going to draw them if the is active flag is set to true. So it's going to ignore all of the ones that aren't. And then we're going to create a button. In fact, you know what? We're just going to copy and paste this we're going to cut and paste it because we don't need that there anymore button so we're going to say q dot x is our x position q dot y is our y position text is going to be q dot name and it's also going to return q dot name like so now in theory if we run this project unless i've made any glaring errors When we come into our map, it should say there's there you go, there's all of our locations. They work. Like so. And that's fantastic. So if you haven't been following along with the video series and you've just jumped into this video, I feel I need to explain what we've done here. We've basically created an object-oriented method for creating our locations. The idea being that rather than having to create a new button for every single location, because if we had like 100, 200, 300 more locations, you'd have to copy and paste this code for every single one. And that, not only would it become tiresome, but it also make this map screen incredibly long when it doesn't need to be. When instead, all you can do is you create your class you're saying to the game this is what an object uh, this is what a place is i want to create a list of places and i want to draw them on the screen so it just saves you having to repeat code over and over again and as i said if you combined this with an xml file and passed the locations in from an xml file you wouldn't even have to edit the code you could just create this bit of code here and then add these properties into an xml file and you would have a map that literally anybody could adjust themselves. All they would need is to put these properties into the XML file and provide a image file whose name matches the name of the location. And there you go. So I hope you found this video useful. I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Thanks very much. Bye bye.